it's April from April's Home and today I thought I would share with you a fun recipe that I love to make. I have some currants here that I would like to make sure I use before they get a little bit too old. I bought some extra around Christmas time. So I thought I would make a recipe that I really love that is called English Tea Cakes. I found the recipe here in my 101 Cookie Recipes books years ago. I used to make it every year. I haven't made it in quite some time, but I thought it was a nice day for it. It's the English Tea Cakes recipe. By the way, if you are looking for a good cookie cookbook, this is one that I love to use. I have found many wonderful recipes in this cookbook over the years. And um, yeah, it's definitely a great cookbook. So today we'll be making the English tea cakes. It is done in a 13 by nine pan at 350 degrees. So you'll wanna go ahead and preheat your oven and gather your ingredients. We'll need powdered sugar at the end, some regular granulated sugar, some flour, some shortening. I like the stick variety because it's really easy to measure. And then some currants. I really like currants. I'm able to find them pretty easily. They're usually sold right by the raisins. I like Sun Made brand. They're always uh, really good. I also make a wonderful uh, slice and bake currant cookie recipe that one day I will also have to share with you. Um, it's definitely a really great one that I make every holiday. And you will also need four eggs. And I like to use my KitchenAid hand mixer. Um, any electric hand mixer will do. And you'll need a nice mixing bowl. So we will start with a whole cup of shortening. So that is the entire stick. I'm just gonna put this in the bowl. And then to that, I will add one cup of sugar. So one cup of shortening and one cup of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and get my electric mixer uh, all plugged in and then blend this together until it's nice and combined. I'm going to be creaming the shortening in with the sugar until it's thoroughly combined. Then I will add one egg at a time, beating in between each one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cream the sugar and the shortening together. So you can see it's starting to come together here. And I will keep stirring this until it is a little bit more creamed than this. Okay, so I have the sugar and the shortening all mixed together thoroughly and I've added my first egg. Um, I'll be mixing those in one at a time and I do like to crack my eggs into a little dish um, just in case a shell falls in or something. It's just a good way to do it to avoid um, messing up your whole recipe or wasting time having to look for a shell. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and mix this egg in. There's egg number one, and there's egg number two. You can see it definitely takes on a very um, eggy texture here. It's a really nice eggy sort of uh, cake. I'm gonna take a minute to scrape down the sides a little bit too to make sure we're incorporating everything. Here's egg number three. and egg number four. So now I'm gonna go ahead and blend in this last egg. And just make sure to mix it thoroughly, scraping the sides until it's all incorporated. And although this recipe doesn't call for it, I'm gonna go ahead and add a cap full of vanilla. I do love vanilla flavor. Actually, I'll, this is a pretty big cap, so I'm gonna keep that at about half a cap of vanilla, just for a little bit of extra vanilla flavor. So now I'm gonna go ahead and blend that in. Okay, and now it's time to add the flour. So this recipe calls for one cup of flour, so one cup of shortening, one cup of sugar, four eggs, and one cup of flour. Again, I've also added a little vanilla extract. I'm gonna just shake a little bit over the top here, and incorporate in that and then continue adding it as I mix this in. And 
and there's the rest of the flour, so I'll go ahead and just blend this all together, making sure to scrape the sides. Okay, so I made sure to mix that up. I started at medium so that the flour wouldn't burst out, and then I um, uh, put my mixer on high and blended that all up, scraping the sides. It was really loud, so I didn't include that in the recording, but that is what it looks like, and now it's time to fold in the currants. Okay, so the recipe calls for one and a half cups currants. And just so you can see, if you're not used to working with currants, they look like little teeny tiny raisins, but they are not raisins. They have a distinct flavor that I really love. Um, definitely would encourage you to try this with the currants. Again, here's one cup, then I'll add a half cup more. Okay, so there's the other half cup of currants. And then I'm just going to mix this in on low because these currants are so tiny. I'm not really worried about my electric mixer um, mincing them up or anything like that. And at the end, I will use a nonstick spatula to kind of fold them in the rest of the way. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and give them the first bit of their mixing in on low. As you can see, it does a pretty good job on low, just mixing them in gently. And then I'll take my red little uh, nonstick spatula here and fold it the rest of the way in. Okay, so the currants are all mixed in, folded in nicely, and now I'm going to go ahead and pour it into a 9 by 13 um, baking dish here. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good spray with a pan spray here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the camera back a little bit so I don't get uh, oil on the lens and give this whole pan a spray. Okay, so I have my 9x13 coated in cooking spray. I just used the Costco kind. And now I'm going to go ahead and use this spatula to transfer all of my dough to the cake pan and then smooth it out on the top. Here is the batter all poured out into my 9x13 dish. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven now at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about... Um, 25 minutes. I'll actually check it at about 20 minutes, but it'll probably need between 25 and 30 minutes. And it's going to be lightly colored on the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and cool that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all baked. Okay, so here is my English tea cake all out of the oven. So you can see it is a very light golden brown and it is really hot right now but you can see it cooked up very quickly. It was about probably 27 minutes but everyone's oven is different. That's why I always say set it at the low end. Maybe even a little bit. Uh, if you know your oven runs hot set it for less than that and then check it and try to determine how much longer that'll need. So I am really eager to try this, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on a cooling rack so it can start cooling. So I'll come back when this is cool so we can dust this with powdered sugar, and then I'll serve up a piece and test it out. Okay, so I'm back, and now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some powdered sugar over the top of this. If you don't have a powdered sugar shaker, um, just uh, maybe uh, put it through like a little mesh a sieve or something like that to be able to shake it over the top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and bring this out to my table. I'm going to add a little bit more powdered sugar and serve up a piece and let you know how it tastes. So I have served myself a piece of my English tea cake here and fixed myself a nice cup of tea. My husband bought me some really beautiful Gerber daisies the other day and they are just beautiful. It was such a nice treat. It really brightened up the house. I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of milk in my tea and try out this English tea cake. Pouring a little bit of milk into my tea there. Mix it around with the tea bag a little bit. This probably needs to steep just a little bit longer. While it is finished steeping, I'm going to go ahead and try a bite of this. You can see all the currants in there. It's just a really nice spongy cake. It's really delicious. The recipe did say that if you couldn't find currants, you could chop up regular raisins. Um, I think the idea is that the, the little um, current in here is small, so you'd want the raisin pieces to be small too, so it would kind of blend throughout this really soft, spongy cake. So I'm going to go ahead and try a bite. And as always, it is really yummy. It's a classic flavor. It goes really nicely with tea. The currants have a really wonderful flavor. I'm actually really excited because I'm growing currants out in my garden this year, and um, one of my bushes looks like it's doing really well. I think we will have some nice currants this year. I'd be very interested to see if some I could dry eventually. I don't think I'll have that much this year, but maybe some year in the future. I'm going to go ahead and try another bite of this. 
very delicious. The tea I'm drinking today is an Ahmad, I think I'm saying that right. It's just an English breakfast tea, my favorite. I like a good classic black tea. This is the variety that comes in this little tin here. Um, I got this one for Christmas from my sister. Just a cute little tin, I love these tins. I have a few different varieties from this brand. So I think my tea has steeped long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. Absolutely delicious. This cake is perfect with a cup of delicious classic tea. The flavors blend really nicely. Those currants are wonderful. So before I go into the kitchen to prepare dinner and uh, clean up my mess from baking, I think I'm gonna sit here and enjoy some tea and a cake here and also look through some of my books and magazines here. I've got a few sitting out to read through. Um, these are little Story Country Wisdom Bulletins that I used to pick up at the uh, farm store. It is a rainy day today, but yesterday we spent the full day out in the garden and I will uh, share with you what we've been up to in the garden in an in a upcoming garden vlog. One of the things we're planting are a bunch of new blueberries, so I'd like to kind of read through this and double check I'm doing everything right. And then I thought I would also look at this one about bread baking and I've also been thinking about trying to make yogurt again, um, maybe butter too, uh, probably not cheese, but just, just interesting little books to read through, food drying. This one is about game birds. I used to raise quail, so just thought that I'd bring these back out. I haven't looked at them in a while. Thought I'd look at them while I enjoyed some tea and cake, as well as my latest issue of Taproot magazine. I love this magazine. This one is called Forage. And it just has some really, really beautiful, it's got very limited um, uh, advertisements in it and just a lot of really good craft ideas and uh, really wonderful pictures, information on gardening and crafting and uh, various things like this. Each issue focuses on like a theme. Again, this one is Forge. So a nice deck of things to look through while I'm uh, finishing up my cake here. I'm gonna go ahead and try one more bite and another sip of coffee. I mean a sip of tea. I'm often drinking coffee and I don't have tea often enough. I would definitely like to start drinking tea every day, maybe replacing out some of my coffee. The edge of this cake has a really nice crispy little top here and it is extra delicious. So this is just a wonderful cake, a very easy recipe with lots of fairly basic ingredients except for those currants there. But um, like I said, they're usually easy to find right by the raisins. When I serve these at Christmas time, I often will cut them into little squares and then cut those across into triangles and serve it that way. But today I'm just serving it in little squares. I also think that this will be a wonderful cake with tomorrow's breakfast. I'll probably serve a slice of this alongside of some eggs and fruit. I think that that would also be a great way to enjoy this cake. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this English tea cake and I hope you give this recipe a try as well. It's really delicious. I have really been enjoying cooking and baking this year and look forward to sharing more recipes with you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more videos from April's home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.